What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. This episode, we're going to be chatting with Dylan. He's got a 7.3 OBS Power Stroke, and we had asked not too long ago on Instagram for people to tag other owners of trucks that they really wanted to hear from on the podcast. And uh, we had Brandon from the 7.3 Garage on, and this particular truck came up in that podcast. So we're going to be chatting with Dylan, learning more about his passion for the OBS Power Stroke and this truck and everything that you know has gone into them and where he's where he's found them what his goals are with racing towing upgrades everything so really excited to bring this episode to you guys we also want to encourage those of you that are listening on podcast apps make sure you go to youtube search the diesel podcast click the subscribe button make sure you hit the notifications as well so whenever we release an episode we're going to have video with it so there's going to be the the guests they're going to have products with them if it's a company or if it's an enthusiast like today they're going to have their trucks behind them so we'll actually be able to see exactly what they're talking about so if you're looking for a more in-depth experience with the podcast make sure and go to youtube search these podcasts and subscribe all right let's get to chatting with dylan about his obs power stroke obsession Dylan, welcome to the Diesel Podcast and some more Ford OBS 7.3 talk. I see two really nice trucks behind you that I can't wait to chat with you about. So we're excited to have you on today. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm super thankful for being here. Uh, I'm blessed with the opportunity uh, and, and glad to be considered. Yeah, we had put out a post on Instagram just asking people, hey, who should we have on for some OBS talk? And you came up a lot. And Brandon, who we had on um you know, recently had mentioned seeing your truck and we thought it'd be great to chat about you. And I wanted to, you know, kind of start with the, what drew you to the OBSs or, or the Ford, the 7.3? Where where did your passion for those trucks begin? Uh, growing up, uh, honestly, uh, they've been in the family for a really long time. Uh, um, uh, and I used to turn a long time since 94. Uh, but uh, just, I don't know, we've always had them. They've been solid workhorses for us. And, uh, Honestly, uh, just again, family, family. Now with, with building them, it, it looks like you have two, two different kind of builds. And I wanted to start with the regular cab where we see the, the hood up there <laughs> and yeah. it looks like a lot of shiny parts, a lot of cool stuff. Where did, where did the idea for the build, how did that start out? Did you think, Hey, I, I want to build a race truck or did it just kind of snowball with one upgrade led to another, to another, to another? Um, I've always been led to, uh, these performance, uh, and stuff like that. Just the nature of seeing trucks do what cars were meant to do. Yeah. Uh, and I'd always wanted to chase horsepower, uh, growing up, everybody told me I was kind of chasing my tail and, uh, just kind of wasting my time with this, the 7.3 liter platform. And I just kind of took that in the initiative, like, well, I guess not to prove you wrong. Uh, so, uh, there's probably the, the big the big motivator uh, is just because everybody said that you can't, and uh, and I wanted to prove them wrong. And again, that was back in uh, I obtained the truck uh, 2008, so we were pretty like diesel performance as far as the industry was really just starting to kind of take flight. So uh, yeah. seven threes just weren't really considered for the platform. Yeah, and that that was the thing I think that drew so many of us to diesel performance was we could have these bigger trucks, plenty of room. And then if we wanted to take them to the track and have fun with them, they'd go fast. And I remember back in that time frame, it was always, well, you got to get a Duramax, you got to get a Cummins or, you know, six liters and the six fours and everything with what they were doing. And there was this thought that, well, it's a seven, three, it's not going to go fast, but that's not true anymore. And, no. you know, when you were building this truck, you said, I want to go fast. What, what did you look to for a blueprint for power and torque? Um, I'm sure we all remember, uh, Zane from WOP, yep. uh, he had that white regular cab four wheel drive truck and I would spend, I'm probably in the hours of time watching that thing on YouTube, <laughs> just the, the small amount of videos that are out there on that truck, just yeah. on repeat. And I just thought, you know, one day I'm going to have that. And, uh, and just a huge just inspiration as far as to the truck. The truck is pretty similar, I guess, as far as appearance wise uh, to his truck. It's just, you know, mine's two wheel drive. Um, but just uh, Zane would probably be my biggest uh, inspiration as far as the direction that I went and kept chasing. Cause I thought, well, if, if there's one person doing it, multiple people can do it. 
Now, when you were when you were building it, did you go you know right for uh, say a particular power number at the start, or did you you know maybe start with a charger and injectors and you know little things here and there, and then progress it, or was it a build you just knew right away? Hey, this is power number. I want to reach this. How fast I want to go, and just put it all together at once. Uh, like everybody else, I started with uh, the the want of big horsepower, and at the time, uh, five hundred horsepower was like it. Yeah. Uh, as far as like what everybody was obtaining with uh, stock rods, and if you really wanted anything else, you just had to go like way out around uh, on some completely custom parts. Anything more than five, six hundred horsepower, and um, so just like everybody else, I started out with a basic chip and intake and exhaust, and I thought, man, this thing is a rocket ship. Um, and then I uh, the, a set of injectors came up for sale uh, at a local shop. And I tossed them in. They were far bigger than what I had originally thought. And it started taking out turbos. And so uh, after I uh, ruined the stock train charger, uh, I swapped to a Super Duty setup and I kind of threw on this 38R. In fact, back in 2011, I bought the Super Duty setup off of Brian Gray. Um, I got his 38R that was on his truck at the time, which the that truck that he has now used to be a four wheel drive long bed truck. Um, and so I got the turbo and stuff off of him and, uh, transmissions were after that. And then we came out and I can't say came out, but the availability of T4 mounts came out to everybody. And so went to a, a T4 mount, uh, a box 366, um, and then it was just kind of one thing after another. I didn't really have a, a goal in mind as far as um, like a particular number. Uh, it just kind of happened. Everything, it was first injectors and then I had to do the turbo and then it was transmissions. And then it just one thing after another. Um, and I was stuck in the 12s for a really long time. Uh, and so I just had this kind of mindset that I wanted to be in the 11s. And, uh, that was, if I, the goal just kind of kept moving as yeah. uh, if it were. Yeah. That's, uh, it's really interesting how, how far seven threes have come. And I, I wanted to ask you, what was one of the biggest things that allowed, what was a perception that these trucks couldn't make power, they couldn't go fast to being able to get into the 11s with it. And I'm sure you've got some goals to go even faster with it. Has it been some of the hard parts? Has it been tuning maybe all of it you know, what what's kind of really helped those trucks jump ahead in the, the power and, and the going fast at the track part um progressive progression wise everybody yeah. giving these trucks the attention that they really deserve i'm going to say um has allowed us to find i guess where the hard parts uh, as far as the hurdles that we have to jump over and everybody uh making revisions on tuning and stuff like that um, and refining tuning has allowed us to get a little bit further than what we had once previously been. Um, I think the availability of hard parts as like T4 mounts, everybody uh, having that openly available to them because again, 2005, 2006, 2007, Hypermax had that H2E mount um, and it was a T4i. And that was really the only thing out there. And it was pretty expensive uh, from what I remember. And uh, companies like iRate Diesel, uh, Carson's Software, those guys come out with T4 mounts. And that really opens up the realm as far as the performance wise, getting a properly sized turbo on these trucks uh, um, really just opens up a new realm for them. Uh, and as well as tuning, as well as tuning, uh, the injectors have been there. But again, I think it's just the abundance uh, that we have available to us now, because uh, back then it was pretty slim. And with the the engine or the rotating assembly, you know, at what point did you have to dig in and and build the motor? And did you run into any obstacles with, say, with some of those hard parts where you needed something, or or has the industry and the seven three aftermarket come so far that you know you're ready to build the engine? You can call someone up or go on a website, and all the stuff is there that you need. Um, unfortunately for myself, the, the truck still has a stock bottom end. Um, it's on, uh, it's on its fourth one. Um, the rods are expensive. I'm kind of hard headed and, uh, it's 
easy to come across entire engines uh, off of Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or something like that for fairly cheap because they're not as popular as the common rails and 12 valves, 24 valves, come trucks and stuff like that. Um, they're not as popular, so the demand isn't as high. And so I'm able to pick up engines, uh, just kind of toss them in for five, four, three hundred dollars. Uh, and so again, the, the engine isn't built per se. Uh, the biggest hard part, I guess I should say, that the truck has is probably head studs, bow springs, and push rods. Um, it's kind of risky. It's definitely risky, and I'm definitely stubborn. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty wild. The the rods are the only thing that I'm breaking now. <laughs> It's, they're they're really hidden hidden jewels, I think, in diesel performance because, you know, even like you were just mentioning with the price of an engine, and you know, there's common rail guys out there that are like, man, I wish I could pick up an engine for that, or you know, some of the Duramax guys. And there's been so much more attention placed on them versus how they used to be. That I mean, there's there's everything, and even you know, right behind you, you've got a race truck, you've got a tow truck. There's tons of different things that you can you can do with them, and it, it's really exciting to see how that segment of diesel has just progressed. And and I, I think I mentioned it to Brandon when he was on. You know, some of the most passionate diesel owners I know are seven three OBS owners. They just love those trucks, and you can find clean ones out there. There's tons of parts, tons of things to do, and it's like a it just opens up a whole new realm of 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 things you can do to a truck or a platform to get into and have fun with versus you know, buying a brand new $90,000 truck or, you know, the five, nine common rails definitely aren't cheap or LBZs, you know, you're 30 grand, 40 grand into something. And there's not a lot of money left over to have fun with. Right. With, yeah. Um, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. I was just going to, I was just going to ask you with, with the other truck, you know, where did that one come about? Where did the, uh, the, the tow truck come in? Um, I actually, I was just cruising Facebook Marketplace one day and uh, it was posted online. The truck is extremely dirty. Uh, the wheels were flipped around backwards. Uh, it was covered in like some Oklahoma red dirt. And uh, a guy locally uh, at a ranch uh, had it for sale and it was cheap enough. Um, I just had to go, I had to go look at it and it turned out to be extremely clean. It was dirty and dusty, uh, but the truck was clean itself. Um, not any sort of uh, hat job stuff going on with it. It was fairly original. Um, nobody had really messed with the truck, I guess you should say. And so it, it, it was just, to me, it was a clean candidate and you had to have that eye of, okay, well, it's sure it's dirty, but let's clean it up. And uh, it turned out the more and more I dug into it, I pulled all the interior and stuff like that out of it to clean the, the carpets. And it turned out to be more and more of a clean truck. And, um, it's one of those, uh, they call them conversion trucks, but it's got different interior wood grain, overhead console and stuff like that in it. And I had to have it personally uh, <laughs> because growing up, my grandmother, uh, she has one. She still has to say she has a 1990. And uh, I, growing up in it, riding it, it was just kind of the coolest thing. Those trucks in the 90s were the classiest. You know, those were what we have today is the F450 Limiteds and uh and, and king ranches and platinums and stuff like that so uh it was just growing up and the nostalgia of having that truck definitely uh, pushed me uh, i guess to keep it and and keep messing with it it's it's really interesting you know when we look back and think of the trucks in our childhood and compare them to the new ones and, and this has come up on some other episodes is you know you go to fuel up or something and you see you know a brand new lariat or a laramie or something you're like well that's cool but you can drive by the dealership and see 10 more like that but you're not going to see a clean 25 year old truck that you know is immaculate that pulls up and it catches your eye more and, and you want to know more about it and they're so they're, there's just so much you can do with them and, and the, the simplicity you know compared to the new ones i just see that whole side of diesel we get so many requests for people to you know, have us talk with someone who's got an OBS or a second gen or, you know, even some of the IDI stuff comes up too. And people just love those older trucks. And it's been really cool, you know, when I was going through your Instagram to see all the different things you've, you've done with both of them and just the excitement and the passion that you have around it. And, you know, as you look towards, you know, this year and, and especially with the racing side, you know, what are some goals that you have with the truck for going faster or if there's a certain power number that you want to hit or what's coming up, I guess, for either truck, but, uh, you know, especially the race truck? Uh, 
this uh, I'm a regular cab. Uh, I'm really hoping to sit, hit sixes uh, on fuel in the eighth um, with the stock bottom in, of course. Uh, there's some guys out there doing it. Uh, for whatever reason, the stigma behind uh, a fuel only number as well as stock bottom in, it's, it's a micro record for myself. Um, the truck's two wheel drive. So I'm kind of up against it all uh, as far as trying to make a two wheel drive hook. Uh, in a 7.3 fuel only stock bottom in, um, I'm making myself my own hurdles, I guess. But uh, as long as it's if if I went 6.99, uh, that would be my my closest goal. Uh, the truck's gone 7.30 as it sits, um, and I've changed. Uh, I went that was with a 4.67. Uh, the truck's got a 4.75 on it now and a, uh, a dual high pressure oil pump set up from a uh, Terminator engineering. It's running that big single on there. <laughs> yes, sir. sir. <laughs> With the, uh... It, uh, it, it, gets up, it gets up on top of it pretty quick. We have the displacement um, to spool it, not like these five, nine guys. They have that tuning on point um, and, and it's kind of hard to get around the fact that we are limited on tuning, I guess, just because of how, I'm mean, using the term dumb the computer is compared to these new trucks. Um, but no, it's got the displacement. It'll drive it pretty well. So I was going to ask you as far as, you know, driving it around, is it is something you can drive around town and, and, you know, just be able to go from point A to point B with that big of a charger? Yeah. Um, the guys, uh, gearhead tuning tunes it. Uh, they're super clean. Um, it, I keep now, don't get me wrong. Yes. You can drive around on a, on a file that is can make it completely like smoky and stuff like that, but no, it is a drivable truck. The truck itself doesn't have any weird, uh, switches or tricks or anything like that to get it to start. Um, if you were to get in it, you would, it would be like driving a stock truck. In fact, um, I've built the truck around the fact of where my wife, if she wanted to, uh, she can hop in it and drive it to the grocery store or something like that. Uh, the truck still has air conditioning, uh, full interior, uh, stuff like that. So uh, it's, it's, there's nothing, uh, I guess, abnormal about like a starting procedure or how it drives or anything like that. Now, is the the tow the tow truck is that one set up completely stock or have you done some upgrades to that one? It's fairly stock. Uh, it's got your basic intake and exhaust uh, and a chip. <laughs> I know there's going to be somebody that's watching this podcast. It's like, man, I love OBSs. Maybe they just picked one up and, and they're looking for something where, you yeah, know, maybe they're not racing. Maybe they just want to drive it every day, tow something. What are some upgrades you would tell somebody to look into as the first set of upgrades to do to you know, get a little bit more power, a little bit more drivability from them? Uh, the biggest, uh, I guess, hurdle on an old body style specifically Um the injectors are your biggest holdback as far as like your power. Um, if you just bumped up to a set of like 160 stocks, um, they are fantastic. They respond really well. You don't have to upgrade a fuel system or a turbo or a high pressure oil pump or anything like that. They're really, I'm going to use the term a drop in injector and they'll perform well. Uh, of course, you're going to benefit from uh, an electronic fuel system, like say from my rate uh, or any of those guys. Uh, it, you're obviously going to benefit from that, but they truly are just a drop in injector and go. And they, like I said, the, the trucks respond really, really well to those injectors. Now, if it's a, if it's an automatic to the stock transmissions, hold up. Okay. To a set of modified injectors and maybe some bolt-ons like an air intake and just some other things, or is, do you have to get into building one, you know, pretty quick in the process or later in the process? Uh, through my trial and error, the biggest killer that I think most people uh find out is heat is what kills an automatic transmission and so uh lots of guys out there uh i can't think of anybody specifically uh but i think mishimoto uh those guys offer a similar size to the 6.0 uh trans uh, transfer and uh but keeping an automatic transmission cool will keep it excuse me uh operating well um a torque converter and a valve body would be probably standard upgrades if you were to rebuild a transmission uh and that would uh handle 400 450 horsepower pretty well uh and not have to get too deep into your pockets to be able to manage uh that kind of power would you say that 4 450 mark is a safe spot for you know going point a to point b towing a little bit not having to jump into the the engine or worry about the bottom end per se 
Absolutely, yeah. Uh, 450 uh, is probably like a magical number. Um, you really aren't having to swap to T4. Um, you're getting by with basic turbo upgrades. The guys at KC, uh, KC Turbos, they've got some good drop-in turbos for these trucks. They're, they're really getting them lined out. Um, an intercooler, a fuel system from Take Your Pick with the guys, uh, like I said, at IRA, uh, Marty's, uh, anybody like that. Uh, and then uh, drive it across the country. Yeah, and make 450 and 450 horsepower in one of these trucks uh, is way different than 450 horsepower from, like I said, the stock power level that the trucks come with now. Um, these trucks are really light. Yeah. Uh, my Julie, for instance, I put it on some scales and I think with me and a friend of mine in it, it was only like 6,800 pounds. Wow. Uh, and that's a four door Dually. So, uh, and then my regular cab, it only weighs 5,400 pounds with me in it. So they respond really, really well to lower horsepower numbers. It's really, that's a really interesting point because we, we see these new trucks and there's this power torque war thing going on, but they weigh so much. There's so much more that's in them electronically and with everything else that comes with them. And, and I imagine 450 in one of those trucks is pretty fun to drive around the street, take to the track and, and have some fun with. Oh, absolutely. 450 horsepower is something they're really responsive. You're not trying to black out a highway whenever you're say if you come up on some kind of car that wants to play around. Uh, you're, you're not really putting that stain, I guess you could say on, on the diesel community. Um, uh, and, and again, drive it everywhere. And, and the great thing about these trucks is, um, which is basically any electronically tuned engine, um, is the, the chips are shift on, shifting on the fly, um, going from something that is just a complete, quiet, normal driving vehicle to something that's way more fun, you know, it, it, it it's a lot of fun messing with these trucks that way. I just thought of a question and <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't prep you for this one, but I know with compound chargers, it's something that the Cummins guys have had for a while, Duramax guys. And I did an episode a while ago, somebody who did it on a seven, three super duty. But as far as mm -hmm. running compounds on an OBS, is that something people have done or is it something that you think in the future might be, you know, something where to get the power, get more air that maybe you start to see more compound kits for those trucks. Uh, we've relied pretty heavily on the displacement of the trucks uh, to drive the chargers. Um, we've, uh, and I use the term, we, people have uh, uh, used nitrous to help spool them. Uh, in the application that most of the guys that myself, a drag, uh, excuse me, a drag racing application, we typically run uh, like a loose torque converter. And that way we're able to get up on top of a, sing, uh, a single. Um, you got guys like uh, Dan Kropnak uh, with SDK tuning. Uh, he's got a, a pretty gnarly set of compounds on his 7.3. Um, I think he's got a 467 uh, to a 488. And the truck drives really well. Uh, <laughs> it, it makes big power. He says he's like coming into boost at uh, 17, 1800 RPM. Like he's really in his stride at like 1800 RPM. And that's crazy coming to someone like me where we know torque is what kills factory rods. And so my truck, I drive it around the 2200, like my charger starting to come in at like 2200, 2300. And so I have a very short uh, power band uh, and I would love to be able to have, you know, the power band of say the compounds and, and the, and the common road trucks. Um, I, again, I think we've relied pretty heavily on the uh, displacement of the trucks to drive the big singles, but I would love to see most of the guys get these compound setups uh, figured out and, and see more uh, of these trucks out there. But uh, I think our, I think the biggest downfall of what seven, three guys and what we fight is we have state dinner dreams on ROM noodle budget. Yeah, it's, it, well, it can kind, of, can kind of come into play with a lot of, a lot of trucks as well as, you know, if, if you're thinking about a build, you have a, a dollar amount, you know, in, in mind and the Cummins guys, you know, they've got to set four to six grand aside for their transmission right away if they want to have any fun. And, it, you know, it's just, it's a matter of being able to decide where you're going to put the money and how you're going to get to that point. And I wanted to ask you with your race truck, you know, who are some people that helped you maybe early on when you were thinking about 
hey, I want this power number, or I want to run this time at the track that helped you either plan out your build or maybe they helped you with, you know, uh, tuning or parts or just where did you find the resources to be able to get to your goal? Uh, I got a big help uh, from a good friend of mine up in Tennessee. Uh, he works at Full Force, uh, Kalen Golden. He, uh, he helped me kind of not, I'm going to use the term waste time uh, with smaller injectors, bigger injectors and stuff like that. Um, he got me kind of on the straight and narrow. But a lot of the stuff that I've obtained and in, in the, the stuff that's on my truck as far as uh, push rods and valve springs, uh, I've picked up stuff off of uh, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I, I've kind of picked up behind people who had given up on seven threes and uh, obtained some parts cheap that way. Um, uh, trying to thank Riley, uh, a good friend of mine at Evil Fab. Uh, he owns Evil Fab Diesel. He's an awesome fabricator, and he put together my intercooler pipe setup. Uh, he he did what I was wanting, which was no boots, I guess per se, uh, less boots than what most of these kits have. Uh, I'm like really simplistic and I want less places of failure. Uh, and he helped me out with that. Uh, he was great with it. Um, as far as, uh, and again, on the transmission, uh, Kalen again strikes again on this transmission. Uh, I picked up a BTS unit, uh, Brian's truck shop transmission in the truck. Now, uh, I picked it up off of Kalen. He got me lined up with a guy that had originally restored an old body style and uh, just felt that the old body style was not the way for him. And so I actually obtained that guy's transmission uh, whenever he went to kind of disassemble the truck and, and go a different route. Um, so it, really, the truck is put together with some used parts. Uh, it's not like a big uh, fancy, uh, and I, I hate to use the term fancy, it's not a big number build or anything like that. Um, it, I guess if you want to call it, it's, it's budget friendly, uh, honestly. That's what people want, though, especially, you know, in today's times as money can be tight, but it doesn't mean that our hobbies and our passions go away. And and uh, we want to be able to save money where we can and then have a truck that does whatever it is we're setting out to do, whether it's a certain power number or certain ET or, or something like that. So it's really cool to see how you put <clears throat> how you put the truck together and how you've been able to, to get there. And I think that's one of the most daunting parts of, of getting a truck and, and having, a, you know, a goal for it is, well, where do I find the help or where do I get uh, the information, you know, that I need? And that's what's so cool about being able to chat with you today is, you know, to go through these two trucks and, and how you came up with a plan and who helped you, which I know is going to help a lot of people out there. And I know another place where you get a lot of inspiration too is events. And, and I know, well, I hope this year that there's more of them and get to do those things. But where do where do you like to go? Where do you like to take the truck and you know maybe show it off or, or go you know run down the track? Uh, like you say, this past year was kind of difficult. Uh, there's a local track here. Uh, we go and visit. Uh, I don't want to use the term too frequently, uh, but we'll go uh, every other month or so. Uh, there's a local track, at XRP, uh, here in Fort Worth. Uh, we'll go hang out there. Um, there's a show uh, once a year down in uh, towards Houston, Texas, uh, called Lone Star Throwdown. Uh, sweet show, a really cool calm. I'm gonna use the term calm. It's not really per se, you know, drip racing or anything like that. It's just a big truck show, and it's really cool to be able to like conversate with people, meet everybody. Uh, and if anybody's got questions, I love talking to people. I, I, I I'm definitely not one of those people that's like, you know. Uh, I don't, I don't hold myself higher than the next guy. I, I was once one of these people kind of crying out going, Hey, can I, you know, I need some help. I need some direction. And you see these guys, you wish you could have a conversation with them and, and kind of pick their brain, but people are busy. And I understand that I'm, I'm not mad at them. Uh, but I, I love talking to people. I'm, I'm always open to answer any kind of questions or anything like that. And so that's a great show to be able to go to and talk with people that have questions about the truck or anything for their truck. It's cool to get ideas too when you walk through and you see different set of wheels and tires or suspension or a build or just different things. You can see them on a truck versus, you know, on a website or in a magazine or something like that. It can be hard to kind of connect it to. And then when you get to chat with the owner um, or the owner of the company and just say, hey, you know, this is what I've got. How do I do this? Or how did you like, you know, this charger or that set of injectors? And it, it can help cut through so much time. And then you get to know people and build bonds and you had mentioned 
you know, you came up on, on Brandon's podcast and he was talking about the hood being up and checking out your engine and everything. And it, it's, it's so cool to be able to connect enthusiasts from all over the country and be able to chat with you guys about, you know, what, what your, what your passions are and, and just the connections that you're able to make. So hopefully there's, there's a ton more going on this year and you see the truck, you know, run down the track, meet more people and just be able to network. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, in fact, right now, uh, in August down here, uh, there's a event called Texas Truck Jam. Um, I don't believe it's diesel specific. Um, and it's uh, here in Ennis, uh, Ennis, Texas. Uh, I'm trying to remember, Texas Motorplex, I believe is what that facility is called. Um, and I'm really looking forward to getting the truck out there. I'm really wanting to be competitive with the truck. Um, 770 is my goal. That way I can kind of be easier on the truck, tone it down, uh, and, and be consistent with it. Uh, but again, as far as an event coming up, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about that event to be able to get back out and see everybody and, 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 and like you say, make more relationships and stuff like that. So I wanted to ask you what it's like when you go to the track and there's a guy in a, a Cummins or a Duramax and you line up to race and he's like, ah, I'm going to take this 7.3 OBS. It's not even going to be close. And you just go out there and beat him. What does that feel like? <laughs> um it, uh, it makes all of the uh, heartache, it makes all of the blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> worth it. Uh, it, it. It really pushes all of the stress that the truck causes. Um, it's so cool uh, whenever you do see somebody uh, and, and, and you race, you come back to the pits and they come back and they're just the biggest question is, is that a 7.3? You know, mm-hmm. and, and they just kind of lose it, you know, it's, and they check it out. And it's cool and because, and, and that, like, again, that makes it all worth it. Because the question, is that a 7.3? That drives it right there. I mean, because uh, yeah. who does it? And I say use the term, who does it? Not everybody does it, I guess you should say. Well, it's the same thing. Like we go to the track and there's a bunch of gas vehicles or sports cars or different things and you beat them in a diesel and then they come back and they're like, well, that's a diesel. It's the same sort of thing. And and it's just, it's such an excitement that that it, if nobody's ever drag raced or sled pulled, it's it's really hard to describe the adrenaline and then the pride that you have in the build and the hours you put in and all the different things just to have fun. It doesn't need to be, you know, this world record setting pass that you make. Just even going out there and, you know, just running a couple passes, seeing what it does. Even stock, it's just fun and it gets you hooked on on the sport. Oh, it's, it's one of the most addicting things is to go down the track for the first time. <laughs> I remember when I did it, I was sitting there and I was staging and my left leg shaking because I'm like the adrenaline's going and I'm like, <laughs> am I going to pass? Oh, wait, I passed the lights. I just lit both balls. But you just learn and, and you progress and it's it's just, it's fun. And um, yeah, I really appreciate what you're doing in, in diesel and, and documenting the builds and, and you know, taking time today to chat with us about it. And I know people are going to be watching or listening and they're going to say, hey, I want to check out. I want to check out these trucks in more detail. And they might have questions, something I didn't ask you. They'd like to know what's a, what's a good way for them to see what you're doing and be able to reach out to you. I'm really active on Instagram. Uh, and, and as far as with the trucks, um, my Instagram handle is nasty seven, three, and it's all spelled out. There's no numbers or anything like that. Um, and, and the name, uh, it, it's it's kind of funny it goes back to some friends and we were all just kind of goobers and we all had nasty in front of our name so uh <laughs> there's nothing special there i don't think the truck is the nastiest thing on earth but <laughs> uh we just like to have fun like you say well man i appreciate you um you know making time out today to chat with us and and uh you know seeing you on instagram and just checking out your page was really cool i'm like man i gotta i gotta chat with him on the podcast and and uh, really look forward to seeing what you do the rest of the year. Definitely keep us updated. Let us know, you know, what uh, what kind of times you're making, any cool new things that, that you did with the build. We love to follow all of them, but these these OBSs are starting to grow on me a little bit. I was a little slow to the to the party, but, I mean, they're starting to grow on me a little bit, and I keep seeing them pop up, and it's like, man, it's so hard to find a truck that's 10 years old that, that that's that clean, let alone, you know, 20, 25 or older. And there's so many great platforms out there to be able to pick up something that's reliable, you can make good power with it, and you can customize it. There's so many parts that are out there. And whether it's for, you know, just like the billet door handles we were chatting about with Brandon or just other things, there's so much. So I, I appreciate you sharing the excitement, the passion, and and showing us these trucks. Yeah, uh, I, and, and really, uh, I hope I hope no matter what anybody's interested in, it doesn't have to be. 7.3s and OBSs, but just follow your passion, follow it. Don't, don't let anybody discourage you from it. 
uh, and that's and that you know, the product that you make will be great. Uh, it, obviously, whatever you're passionate about. So yeah, but no, thank you for having me on today. Don't forget, Diesel fans, make sure and head on over to YouTube, search the Diesel Podcast, click the subscribe button, and then also turn notifications on. So when we release these episodes, you get notified right away. And if there's any companies, people, or topics that you want us to cover on the podcast, go to Instagram, find us, where the Diesel Podcast, send us a direct message. We'd love to hear from you guys, see what you're building, and then also get your questions. There's a lot of really good insights and we get a ton of our ideas from interacting with you guys and hearing about you know what what you're curious about what you may want to know more as it pertains to your truck performance trends you know what's going on in the diesel community until next time keep the shiny side up